Opinions and welcome to Unmade Gaming. We are here for another episode of Men of Letters where we are still missing one fresh-faced newsy. But on the bright side, we do have Colin from Phantom Rollbooth. We have Colin from Phantom Rollbooth. We have Marcy from Phantom Rollbooth. We have the Nomadic Man himself. Uh, and we have one Burst of Hope, a.k.a. Jess. That being said, we are all back, more or less, in the fray of Arkham, Massachusetts in 1927. And without further ado, I will jump back into things. Previously on the Men of Letters. Jack awoke after sleeping off the events of the previous night, only to find that Joey had seemingly disappeared from the booth in which he had slept the night before. Not thinking too much of this fact, Jack went to wake up Tora, only to realize that she quite literally disappeared from her room. Growing concerned, Jack woke up the lady of the house, Miss Belladonna Antropos, who confirmed that Tora was still on the premises, though caught in some kind of uncontrolled astral projection, and offered to be her guide back to the material world. Hellbent on finding young Joey, Jack sent out to Arkham to sniff out the trail of chloroform that he caught the scent of in the booth. However, when he met with no luck, he turned his sights on the park, where he met the local garbage man. That being said, we will cut back to the foxglove, where... Though we can't see her, Tora is in fact there. Tora, you went to your room the night before, or the night after the events of the culling. You quickly, hastily moved the salt away as you were told not to do that again. And then you promptly sat in the center of your bed as you had done the night prior and began to meditate. How are you feeling about the scenario? Um, as I remember... I didn't have the best of time, especially after talking to Miss Belladonna. So as I try and center myself and take these meditations to relax myself into a rest, I can't help but hear that haughty, insidious voice of Miss Belladonna. Insidious? She's such mm -hmm. a pleasant gal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, except when she's condescendingly telling me I'm shit at occultism. Well. <laughs> so as you sit in the bed meditating, what are you focusing on? Are you trying to drive her voice from your head? Are you trying to prove her wrong? Are you trying to just clear your head of the craziness that was the night prior? Absolutely. I'm trying to, you know, essentially turn the, the volume dial down on her voice and trying to focus on just nothingness. Hmm. Unfortunately, I keep seeing Joey's face pop up and the enthusiasm and the always ready to jump in attitude of this young person somehow plopped into the middle of this dangerous situation and I can't find my general nothingness. I can't do it. Now, with the constant bombardment of Joey McLaughlin uh, intruding on your mind, much like he intrudes on your reality, uh, what, where does your mind go? Where do you drift as you try to force these voices out and achieve that, that zen state? As I manage to muffle Miss Belladonna's voice the the face of joey kind of starts shifting and it flickers and it's replaced with another young face mm. it's a young girl who looks similar to me and keeps flashing looks of happiness contentment then worry and franticness and i just can't erase this face out of my brain as I start drifting off. Now, you've meditated in this manner before. Where do you typically drift off to? Whether this face haunts you or not, I feel like you, you kind of go through the same motions to get into your that proper state of, of, of oneness. Um, so where do you typically go? Everyone finds their nothingness in a different way. And for Hana being an ex-pilot, it's, it's always in the air. I feel myself drifting higher and higher into a space above any humanity existence, just finding air and fluidity up in the clouds. Now, when you are in the clouds, are you a, a 
a full physical body just flying? Are you a, a bird? Are you in your, one of your planes? How, how do you perceive yourself while soaring through the sky? It will always start as me controlling a plane mm -hmm. right in the cockpit. And uh, as you are, as I'm able to sink further and further into this meditation, it dissolves until I am just drifting particles, one with the clouds. Okay. So as you are in the cockpit of this one seater, um, the, the, you know, the, the steering mechanism firmly in your grasp, you are in your full um, combat flight suit regalia. The comfort of the tiny capsule is around you and you feel that sort of safe space, as it were. Uh, you can look down through the side and you can see, you can look down through your feet and you can kind of get that bird's eye view um, from, from what's happening beneath you. Uh, and as you kind of take in the sights, when your eyes reset back to normal, you see a familiar sight and you wish it weren't. There is a small child, looks similar to you, pounding on the windshield of this plane. My mind is split because this is generally the, the moment where I'm able to transition into oneness and it's torn between not leaving this space and trying to reach out to help this little girl but I don't know what to do. I'm left with a sense of helplessness. So you see this person pounding, pounding, pounding on the windshield, and then you see them stand up, which obviously it shouldn't be possible at this altitude for them to be even on the plane, let alone stand up on it, uh, which kind of grounds you in that this isn't real, right? Uh, but you see them stand up, and you see them point down, and that's when you realize that the, the, the nose of the plane is pointed up. And she points down again, and then she steps to the side. And you see her, like, flicker and fade to nothing. And as you try to grab at the, the flight mechanism, you realize that you cannot pull down. Something is forcing your plane upward, and you are driving or you're flying up at an alarming rate. What are you doing? I'm terrified that I'm going to stall out, so if I can't do anything with the stick and fight against it, I will start strapping any, uh, going through the procedures to eject myself. From okay. The plane. Yeah. So you reach around, you grab, uh, the parachute that you know is beside your, your, in your, beside your seat, the flight seat in your cockpit. You begin to sort of strap this on, you unbuckle the, the latch, toss it overhead. Um, and you begin to release the grasp uh, the, the clasps on the glass canopy. Um, and when you release all of the clasps, these pressure clasps, normally it would the canopy would fly open and you would be able to eject from this thing. However, clasps released, the canopy does not release, the glass does not move, and you appear to be trapped in what was once the safety of your airplane. You still have the parachute on and the plane is still climbing upward. What are you doing? Ooh. <laughs> Um, I'll start pounding at the glass, trying to look for anything that's caught, frantically looking at my straps, even though that's not the general problem. Mm -hmm. And I'm just in panic mode at this point, trying to find a way to open up the hatch. Okay. So almost in a, uh, a, a comically mirror pattern, you are now that young girl pounding on the glass, although you are pounding from the inside. As you pound, the sound around you seems to fade away. First, it starts with the pounding of your hand on the glass, the thud, the dull thud uh, of skin on, on contact. Uh, that fades away. And then you know, as you notice that, you notice that the roar of the engine has faded away. And you have that sensation of, of almost being underwater, where everything sort of sounds like a, like a, like a looping echo. Um, and then you hear nothing except that shrill whine of emptiness. You recognize this as almost being the same as when you were in the room, uh, in, in the, in the foxglove, and you hear a voice, it's very, very distant, but the immediate, like, prick in the back of your head is that condescending voice of Miss Belladonna, but it's drowned out by a loud laughter. It sounds like the laughter of hundreds. 
a sort of echoing in your head, echoing in the glass chamber that is your cockpit, just sort of bouncing around in there, bouncing around in your head as if ricocheting. And all at once, you see something sort of flash into being. And you see something is wrapped around your entire plane. There seem to be these, like, massive, massive pseudopods that have attached themselves to your plane. They are wound around the propeller, which you now notice is no longer moving. They are wound around the wings. You see, as they flash into being, you see the suckers pulsating on the glass, holding it down. As you see, this thing is pulling you forward. As you kind of follow the trail of these massive tentacles that are too impossibly long, and there's too, too many of them, you see that they end in some sort of hole, some sort of void into nothingness. It is traced in this purple and green miasma as you see into just a black void. It doesn't look like space. It looks like nothingness. It looks like the darkness between stars. There's no twinkle in here. And whatever this is, you get that roller coaster, you know, plane ride sinking in your feeling, a sinking stomach, in, a sinking feeling in your stomach uh, that this is bad. Whatever's happening is very bad. And you feel genuine fear, which usually in this sort of state, your emotions are a little bit dulled. You feel very aware of your senses right now, as if you are actually here. What are you doing? Um, my hands, they're, they're conscious. I feel them. I touch my face. I'm like frantically looking around for the emergency kit, trying to find a crowbar. And I'm like, this isn't, this is how it normally goes. I, ooh, this is not good. You feel all of the control you normally have in this dreamlike state slipping away from you. Oh, <laughs> what's the opposite of a meditation? Because I think I just did that. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, if I find a crowbar, I'll yep. start beating at the windshield. Yep. You know your cockpit like the back of your hand. You know exactly what's in there. If there's a crowbar in your plane, you can get it. So you start smashing at the window of this thing and you feel the iron of the crowbar. You feel the porous metal. It feels like you're here and you take it and you crack against the windshield and it splinters and you see that the, the suckers begin to pulsate more and it, and it begins to spiderweb across this thing as it crunches in and you feel the air rush by you and you know that you are flying in this thing and then you feel the air continue to rush by until it is gone as you begin to choke as there is no air where you are and you hear again in the back of your head that condescending voice sort of maybe calling at you maybe taunting you you're not entirely sure what it is but it sticks back there as something that just sort of draws your attention out of what's happening for just the briefest of seconds what are you doing <laughs> Um, it's in the back of my head, mm -hmm. and I hear Belladonna, and I'm like, oh, if I'm actually here, dying in my brain, am I going to die in real life? How do I get out? Should I, oh, maybe, yep, I got to jump the plane, right? I got to jump the plane. That'll be fine. And I'm still, like, one hand clasping, trying to, like, get air somehow, even though it's not possible. And I'm still trying to break the glass of the window. Oh, the glass of this window has shattered. Okay. Yeah, all that's um, left is the frame around where the glass would have been. And that's the only thing keeping these tentacles from reaching out towards you. I'm absolutely going to start crawling out and bashing at these tentacles. Okay. Um, I need you to roll me <laughs> some dream dice. Uh, I need you to roll me. And intellect, uh, difficulty four. Okay. Um, I'm, down, I'm down for whatever skill nonsense you can throw at this. At this point, I'm going to do a blind roll for this one because okay. I don't think I have my wits about me to apply effort. Sure. Whee! Just okay. shy of success. So you begin to climb out of this thing and you begin to leap knowing that 
you are going to free fall, not sure if this will actually save you or this will kill you just as much as whatever the hell's happening would have killed you. But you feel like this is the better choice than going into that darkness. Uh, and as you pull yourself out and you get ready, take that, and then you go to leap, you feel the pseudopod reach around you by the ankle just for the briefest of seconds as you see a bright white flash and you see a small child, again, similar face as you. You're not in the plane, you're not in the sky, you're in a small village, um, not on any map you can recognize. You see two uh, uh, adults that are vaguely similar to you looking. Um, you could identify them as your parents. You would, in fact, now that you kind of clear your, your vision and you see this. And then you hear the roar of a creature that adult Torah knows exactly what it is. And you feel all the fear that took you in your teenage form. And then a bright white flash happens again. And you are in the foxglove. And you are sitting on the bed. And you see that girl in front of you again. And she points towards the door and flickers as you receive a vision of the night before. And then a bright white flash again. And you see a room full of people all dressed in white robes with low white hoods masked with a giant bl uh, black triangle on the front of them and you hear them chanting in a low rumble in front of them are candles forming a circle in that circle is a man he is bound and he is seemingly unconscious and splayed um as in the the, the vesuvian man kind of position um and around them are these massive machines each of the machines have these wax cylinders in them they are chanting the machines are playing this cacophony of noises uh and then you see one person walk out holding this massive book it's probably like two feet wide uh this this huge like he needs two hands to hold this thing bound in some kind of leather massive metal locks on this thing and just the most insane geometry is inside of this. You can identify this from your travels and from your expertise as some kind of very elaborate spell work. Uh, this man is also robed in black and he has a mask covering his face. Uh, and the mask seems to have like lidless eyes that seem to be that same kind of void and from the eyes stream tentacles as well as this person speaks some kind of language you've never heard before. And then you flash to white and you see a disheveled Belladonna. Not the prim and proper, haughty, condescending lady of the foxglove that you knew. You see her standing over an empty bed, which you can only assume might have been yours, though the rooms look fairly identical. She is distraught, hair sort of wild. You see that, that candles flicker in the room. You see that beads of sweat pulse down the side of her face as she is chanting something and she throws her head back and you see that the eyes, uh, her, the, the lids of her eyes fly open and she has white eyes, completely white, no pupils, no irises and her mouth goes slack and you are gone. You are sitting on the bed of the foxglove. She <laughs> collapses next to you unconscious what are you doing i'm gasping I, I roll over trying to gather my senses and uh, sigh i'm here i'm where i'm supposed to be what the fuck you feel that choking feeling right like, you did not have breath in your body for too long of a time. You have that, like, little bit dizzy, lightheaded kind of feeling. Um, and you can still feel, as if they're still there, the suckers from that tentacle wrapping around your leg. And if you pull the pant of your leg up, you see that there are marks. Like, tiny teeth bit into you in concentric circles around your leg, your lower calf. That seems to have been real. In fact, if you look at your hands, they are bloodied from you smashing at the window. Yeah, doing a once over on my body and realizing this, I look over past the bed, assuming to see Belladonna passed out. She is passed out. Holy shit, that was real. What the fuck did I just see? I'm alive, this bitch. 
Jack. I look over to see if she's alive. First. She is alive. She is breathing. Okay. She is breathing, but unconscious. Okay. Um, again, she looks incredibly disheveled, sweaty. Uh, in fact, if you if you kind of like really give a, a once over to her, it looks like she might have been here for more days than you feel like you've been gone. <sighs> this felt like a matter of hours. Right. But it looks like she's been here for a, a couple of days doing right. whatever it was that she was doing. Hmm. Jack, you smell a change in the foxglove. You you knew the, the the smell of the incense and the smell of the candles, and you heard the low guttural, you know, wailings of Lady Belladonna. But what you smell now is both familiar and a little bit pungent. You smell a new smell of sweat. Um, you know, being being Jack and being what you are, you did smell the bed a few days ago <laughs> to see if Tora was there or to catch her scent. And you uh -huh. picked that up again. It wasn't there before, but now you smell the faintest trace of Tora. Mm. What are you doing? She's back. That's good. I think. I yeah, think you, it's good. You hear a, a thump as something falls. Uh, in the, I assume you're in your room, or at least in the fox in the, in the in the lobby. You hear a thump as if something falls. Um, and then I assume panting from that room as well. Do you go and investigate? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. I will, uh, I will go and knock on the door. Uh, you hear nothing, Chora, because that's how those rooms work. But, it is. But Jack remembers and opens the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do have to, like, I'm trying to be polite. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, right. right. Damn it. Uh, and as you sort of creak the door mm, open, you see that Miss Belladonna, the lady of the house, is passed out unceremoniously on the floor, and there is a distraught version of Tora sitting on the bed. Hey, you're uh, you're back. I something. Yes. Um, do I look okay? And do I look the same? Uh, <sighs> I mean, you're kind of bleeding from your knuckles, but yeah, you look fine. She looks windswept, as if she was flying through the air. Do you want a brush or? Eventually, but I. Do you want a drink? No, eventually. Um... Is there anything that I can do for, and I'm going to look at Belladonna. I'm going to go take her to her room and I'll be right back. Wait, wait. Do you wait. not want, I'll, I'll stay here. Never mind. How okay. long, how, how long? Uh, two days. I assume since you've been gone. Excuse me? Two days. 48 hours. Do you want to... Two... I don't know how to make this better for your brain. It was It was that long. I whew, almost got sucked into the darkness and uh, the creatures and... Uh, still can't breathe right Okay. okay. Um. Yeah. Go take care of the woman. <clears throat> if she uh, wakes up, tell her thanks. Yeah. Think, unless uh, she put me here, then don't thank her. Um. You know, I don't know if I'd put it past her to do it. I'm, I'm not going to say that out loud because. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's I've fair. I've known I've known Belladonna for a bit, and like. <laughs> There are certain ways, I guess, to break people out of things, like inducing nightmares. Yeah. That's and a fair, I don't that's put a it past assessment. her. Yeah. Or making so. her do that in the first place, making her disappear entirely. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good assessment of Lady Belladonna. She is that kind of person, for sure. Yeah. Um, um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll scoop her up and uh, take her back to her room. Okay. Hiram, you are staying at the Fox Love at this point. Um, it was. Let's say it was no surprise to you to see that uh, you all have matching keys. And all of the rooms, the room that was given to you, is in a line with the missing person that, that Jack had informed you of. The other missing person that Jack had informed you of. Jack himself and your room were all in a line, all with matching keys, all with the same symbol carved on the door. The symbol that was on the back of the letter that you also received, whether you've shown people or not. But it has been two days since the events at the park, and you now hear this 
not quite scuffle, but this disturbance in the room. In, like, my room? In the room next to you. They're, they're all, like, in a line, like, in a hotel room. So you hear this this scuffle, and then a few moments later, you kind of see Jack carrying uh, Lady Belladonna up and out of the hallway. Um, she looks unconscious. Yeah, no. You wouldn't put it past Jack to carry a woman to bed. However, she does look unconscious. Uh, rough night? Oh, well, Jack disappeared. <laughs> Jack, <laughs> Jack disappeared. Uh, she... uh, before I see this, I go and make sure that I put myself a nice, uh, yeah. nice... gosh. It took a, took a few minutes. Uh, he looks yeah, to you. You know, sharpen my fucking blade. Yeah. He, oh. he's, he's holding this, this unconscious woman, uh, mm-hmm. who obviously you recognize, and he looks over and goes, uh, yeah, um, something like that. Uh, Tora's back. And he kind of continues past your door to head up the stairs to go deposit Miss Belladonna in what you assume to be her room, hopefully. Uh, what are you doing? Um, Getting on the next train out of Arkham? Yeah, fuck this, man. <laughs> I don't get paid. No, I get paid enough to do it. Um, yeah, you, you seem to got this, uh, seem to got this unlock. If you need help, let me know. I'm gonna go check out uh, our new friend. Say hello. So, Jack, uh, Hiram has offered his assistance to you carrying this woman off to bed um, after asking you if you had a rough night. Um, <laughs> but having said uh, something like that, you continue on to the bedchamber of uh, Miss Belladonna as Hiram goes to check on this new companion, Tora. Tora, you see Frankenstein. You see a six foot four beast of a man. This guy is is large, barrel-chested, muscular, has to kind of walk sideways through the door to even get in. Uh, He darkens the doorway, standing in front of your room. (laughs) Even as I'm gasping for breath, I'm, like, quickly, like, (laughs) reaching for my my knife and being like, oh, oh, no, who the fuck are you? What are you... (laughs) That's how everyone... I don't need this shit. (laughs) It looks like you need a drink, and I uh, reach into my pocket, put out a, a flask, and uh, offer it out. I'm sorry, who who are you? Eh, I'm a garbage man. But um, I think we're all supposed to be here together, or something like that. And I, like, show her the key. You see so that he I has the, say, the fourth oh, key. Oh, the fourth, the fourth door. Oh, oh, I just assumed she didn't. Okay. Um, right. I've been out. Uh, yes. And yeah, we noticed. Yes, I, I will take take the drink. That's good to to have. I'm Tora. I'm sorry. I'm a I'm little right. off. Hiram, nice to. Wow, you are. Very strong and large. Eh, dangerous uh, field we work in. Uh huh. Yeah, so it's I get that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm very clearly fucking big. Like, so no shit. Oh, down there. Oh, like this. I'm only 50 fucking years old. I think I get how big I am. <laughs> Fuck me. I'm not saying that, but there's a little bit of that look on his face. Like that face. irritation. I'm yeah. just like, really? I'm not that stupid. That little anime I'm twing. Like, I thought I was going to die. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I'm saying stupid shit, the obvious. I'm like, okay. Okay. Not going to crush my soul. Maybe not going to crush my windpipes. Offering me a drink, I will take it. And you, uh, where, where'd you go? Apparently physically where my brain went, which I don't know how my brain got there, and there was a lot happening. That was one fucking dream. Holy shit. Like like a like an actual dream or like you got into the, like the absinthe or <laughs> I wish. I wish. It's been a long time since I've seen some absinthe here, you know? Um no, I think I don't know. I still don't know what to make of Belladonna. I can't tell if she saved me or she put me there, but like 
all of a sudden I was going through my routine, trying to meditate, and now I'm sucked into some horror place where there's like suction cup creatures and there's big dark void and something's trying to take me away and then my fucking sister shows up like there's this look on Hiram's face like fuck me I shouldn't have even asked (laughs) it's like god other people's problems perfect uh Oh, oh oh um 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 where's where's the little one the small one the tiny one joey where's joey joey's looking for the wax and the canisters and the device and i saw the devices and would jack have told hiram about joey uh, i mentioned last well, when we first met that i lost a kid but right. i didn't actually go into details okay okay uh i don't know. I mean, I know like a lot of Joey's, but uh, not any here. You do know that uh, in the last two days of being in the Fox Love, you haven't actually seen any children. Okay. And I mean, I've, you know, been here for what, 48 hours and yeah, there's, there's no, no little kin here. Oh, oh no. Okay. Um... Did you lose your child or? I Definitely. I know the other guy lost a kid. Mm-mm. Don't have a child. Not my child. Don't listen to anyone. Not my child. Oh, wait. Who, someone lost a kid? Is this kid you Yeah. Know? But, um, Jack guy. Jack. Lost a kid or bribed a kid away? Uh, he said he lost the kid. Okay, and I'm 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 deep into the into the glass that you gave me. I'm like, yeah, just Mm-mm. we'll just refill it, bowl it out as private stock. It's fine. Okay, all right. I clearly, you know, I need I need a moment. I'm still trying to gather myself. I swear, I'm not this. I, let me collect myself. Okay, Hiram, you said, um, why don't you go find Jack, and I will get dressed, and we'll figure out what what the hell is going on. All right. I'll uh, go ahead and leave and try to go find Jack. So, Hiram, you go off to find Jack. Tori, you get dressed. Jack, you lay Belladonna down for her whatever this is. Siesta, you hope. Um, Seven days pass. Over the course of this time, you guys are able to recuperate, discuss... Possibly what happened to Tora, possibly what happened to Jack and Hiram. You guys have the floor here. Over the next seven days, what do you do? What are you looking for? What are you finding? And uh, how, how are you guys getting on? How are you guys bonding and becoming more and more friends? Just close, close good buddies. The Disney friends. The best of friends. Birds come down to Twitter on your shoulder and yeah, tell you stories. The they all have We're tentacles. Good friends. Great friends. Mm-hmm. I want to know how Jack frames losing Joey. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, Jack would uh, inform you that he smelled chloroform and uh, they're not sure what can be done about that. He, he traced it to what felt like the center of that pentagram in the city. He's actually quite upfront about it. Tora will like jab her Ow. finger in the middle of your chest and be like, you lost Joey. Wait, did Joey leave? Did you scare Joey away? I don't, I, I chloroform. That's an easy, like how the fuck do you smell chloroform? I just, I've, I'm familiar with the smell. That's still not a thing you, that most people are, I mean, I smelled I'm, it all the I'm way throughout the town. Chemicals. What? <laughs> uh, it's a good question. Um, I oh, he disappeared the night I went to sleep? Yeah, actually. Disappeared. Yeah, I think somebody came into the place and took him. Okay, so you lost Joey. You yeah. tracked the chloroform down. I, tried, I mean, no, I smelled the chloroform and then I followed a, a trail. Uh-huh. A visual trail or a, a, a smelly trail? Some of it was actually smell, but for the most part, it's like bits of hair and stuff, you know. 
Tora side eyeing you, trying to analyze you and understand your discomfort. Um, okay. Did any? Did so you didn't? You lost the trail? internally. Jack's freaking out. He's like, "How do? Why are they asking questions? <laughs> Stop asking things." You <laughs> Chloroform. I, oh my god, it's just a thing that I can do. <laughs> chloroform is very pungent. I just only can smell chloroform all the time anywhere. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's no like, matter it's how a, old that's, it's that's a binary power. <laughs> it's a binary state, you know, chloroform, not chloroform. That's what I got. Uh-huh. Um. So you played the hot cold game and then you lost the set and then what? You ran a, well, like where where did where did you find this giant ass man? Well, we were talking about going to the park, and I figured, well, maybe if Joey got away, he would go to the park. So I went there, and I found this guy digging bodies. Well, what? digging dirt. I asked him what he was digging. He said he was digging dirt. To be it fair, was, he was burying. Yeah, bodies. it was bodies. <laughs> yeah, that's a different story. Not digging for them up. Day. Not digging them up. Putting them in. That, <laughs> that was a them, job like ten in. years ago. You know, <laughs> you talk about that one. Yeah. So you so found yeah, this good. man in the park, or the uh-huh. park, the, the park, How the park, the, the park, back. Okay. And this is the fourth guy. Fourth guy? What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, the men, the men, the men of ladders. Like, oh god, are you serious? That guy? Yeah. No, you didn't put two and two together, really? You've been wandering around with a giant man as your bodyguard and just running around town without knowing that he was, you know, going to be your partner in this weird conspiracy? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm actually okay with this. He's uh, yeah, much like better a than, an, I don't know, a 13-year-old. I so. Yeah, okay, um, clearly. Uh, okay. Well, I was apparently, like, projecting myself into the ether. Still not convinced that Belladonna didn't do this to me. I just like right. that no one has decided to involve Hiram in any of these conversations. <laughs> I think I think this is a, an aside for now. Um, I was imagining Hiram just standing there, yeah. like, in the foreground as they're talking. <laughs> like, they're in, they're in Tora's room, and he just keeps walking by. Hiram doesn't care. And he like heads downstairs. <laughs> Ten minutes later, he Great walks first, back up the stairs. Great first impression. So I'm just like, he's so large. I yeah, just a big shot. Yeah, he actually saved my life the other day. So, oh, yeah. Beautiful. Uh, there are things, um, and I'm going to describe the things that we fought in the park. Mm. These creatures without faces. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That were winged and tried to carry us off, and didn't have sound like that was. Can't have sound. Mm. No sound. Mm-hmm. Nope. Not not pleasant. They didn't um, have faces, right? Tor, if you look to the map, kind of. you can see exactly what attacked them. A squad of four of them swept down from the sky. Right. Yeah. And attacked them. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, that's four. It was two, and then two too many. Um, right. Great. That's smart. Good job. We could have finished them off. I'm just saying. Yeah, that's true. No biggie. Yeah, no big deal. That's, that's fine. Those aren't terrifying at all. Um, summoning circles. Does that ring a bell to you guys? Yeah, I, uh, and I I think about it for a second. I'm like, I can't tell her I smelled one. (laughs) (laughs) List of Uh, things Jack can smell. Chloroform, summoning circles. <laughs> also, corpses. also uh, blood, yeah. like copious amounts of blood. It that is, is a lot of blood. not human and not animal. Yeah, he knew definitely <laughs> that it was not of those two things. Yes, yeah. but but it was definitely blood. Because yep. I'm trying to think of a way to say that I smelt sulfur without saying I smelt sulfur. I mean, sulfur is more is. believable to smell than fucking chloroform. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he's worried so now, I think for obvious reasons. Yeah. I'm help you at all I was going to say, there were, uh, there were uh, like, this, um, what's it called? Uh, like, imprints in the ground sure. that I'm were circular? I'm really starting to remember the flashes of something odd in your visage when I was detecting the ghosts the first night. 
Um, just Where, a, just what, the what is, active what is his effect? There seemed to be, you know, I unconsciously, because I wasn't projecting my concentration towards it, but I definitely detected some sort of wear body of sorts. And now I'm starting to wonder. But that's neither here nor there. I'm looking at Hiram, I'm looking at Jack, and I'm like, so we've got a very capable bodied man who's a garbage a ga- a guy. Yeah, he's a garbage guy. Guy. Yeah. He's a garbage person. Who was garbage. burying he's garbage. bodies. Yeah. He's not a rich boy with a silver sword. Look, you just have those things sometimes. We've got a missing child. This cute little newsie out in the world who's apparently seen nightmares upon nightmares and experienced life larger than most adults. And I did a thing in my brain while I was sleeping. Also, I should note that while I was, you know, being eaten alive in the plane with these little sucker fish tentacle things, there was um, a flash smash cut to, like, a body and a ritual and, you know, those wax cylinder things that Joey kept talking about. There was a lot going on. Some sort of weird ritual was happening and some sort of man looked like might have been sacrificed. I can't tell. That's good. That's yeah. not great. Okay. Yeah. And no. now we have no more men of letters have- to induct us into this weird shit. It's it's me. What? I'm that guy. <laughs> I'm, no. I'm that guy. Yep. You you're no. It's me. Ooh, you've yep. got to be shitting me. I'm not little asshole. Hiram, yep. that's a revelation for you as well. Yeah, wait. There. What? You want like, you were just you were, you you played us? Like you you're, the, you're now the rich boy. Who lies to us? Lies is do we just always have somebody who's in? So why didn't they kill you? Huh? Because I was with you all. <laughs> with you all. Very good at keeping a low profile. <laughs> Behind newsy children? Yeah. I did not expect a 13-year-old, I'll be honest. Where where is this conversation taking place? I don't know. We had like seven days and we're having a very long (laughs) conversation. Um, Probably in like the commons area. Yeah, probably. I do have like, I do have things that I did over the seven days. Uh Uh-huh. Okay, so then let's do this. Not just interrogation. Just not not like seven days of interrogation. So what things did you do, all of you, in those seven days? And then we can jump back to the Inquisition of Jack. Uh, So Jack... Uh, since you are being inquired upon, what did you accomplish in those seven days? Oh God, this does not look good for me. Uh, anyway, things what, I what smells did you smell? What? Oh yeah, sure. Things that I did in those seven days. Mm-hmm. Uh, Anne, Matilda, Andrea, Maria, <laughs> Annie, Tim, <laughs> Lynn, Jane, Jane Sanders, Jane yes. Anders, uh, Tall Jane, Play Jane, Annabelle, mm-hmm. Stacy, <laughs> John Mark. Uh, Stacey Lynn, Ann Lynn, Paula, uh, <laughs> Olivia Ann, Casey Lynn, Adrian, uh, Lynn Miranda, and, um, and also Tammy, again. Do I hear a John in there? Uh, Jean-Marc, it's French. <laughs> okay. You're feeling a little something different that day. Uh, I'm flexible. That's fair. Clearly. Um, <laughs> did you accomplish anything important? Oh, no. How many times did you go to the Fox truck? <laughs> Every day? Oh. That's the best place we, to find information. Tora and yeah. Hiram are blessed to not have Jack's sense of smell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Hiram. Does anybody do fucking work around here? No. No, they, don't. they fucking don't. This place is a dump. <laughs> Jack's a dump. You miss the ghosts, okay? This place is very much a dump. You miss the fucking 70-foot tentacle man. Um, We'll go back to that, Tora, because that's going to be a good (laughs) conversation entirely. Okay! In the meantime, Hiram, in those seven days where you just seem to see Jack disappear and return home with a smile and then disappear 
several times a day, which is concerning. Maybe he's into drugs. Opium's a thing right now. Um, uh, big thing. What are you doing to accomplish anything in this, these seven days? I'm trying to do my fucking job. I probably pester Jack every now and, now and then, like, hey, you know, you owe me $18. Maybe now it's 17 because you paid me a little bit here and there. But I, I want to go find the wax. Like, that was kind of okay. uh, this thing... That seemed important. And... Yes, you can easily track the wax down. Uh, in fact, you track down several sellers of relatively generic uh, wax to, for for use in um, uh, phonograph cylinders. Um, mm -hmm. You notice that all the places you kind of check out, uh, it's not quite the right kind of wax. Okay, it seems as though this wax is. I don't know, you know, maybe maybe more dense, maybe it's more it's it's less malleable, right? It seems like a more expensive quality. It's blue, first of all, which is strange. Um not not a common um not a common sight um in this this the Edison wax, uh, as it were. Um but you are able to find um that there there is a warehouse um that people have seen that wax come from. Um, it's very rare. Uh, it comes off one specific ship, um, and they it only goes to this one warehouse. Usually, these stores will get, like, one crate every two months or so, um, mm -hmm. but it sells out pretty quick. They're not sure why, what it is. Maybe it has better sound quality. There's so few of them, and they're so expensive that the shopkeeps have never bothered to test it out to see what it can do, right? That's kind of a waste of money at that point, just to see yeah. what it is. Um, so they don't bother. They, they assume it's just higher quality, um, hence the the, ex the expense of this thing. Uh, but you are able to find that it comes from a warehouse down in Rivertown. Okay. And then, like, other than that, um, if there, I'd, I'd like to encounter, you know, the things that go bump any, in the any night. They, of bumpy things? All, yeah. they fucking always find me, uh, you know, where I find them. And instead of just the typical uh, disposal, uh, I would like to, like, take their heads or an appendage and I constantly bring them back to Jack. Is this the thing you're looking for? Uh, nope. Would you find, no. Okay. No, and then like I'll bring another thing. That's so many things. It's like five things this week already. There's a lot of garbage on the streets. We're in Boston, right? We're uh, in Arkham. We're south. We're, we're south Arkham. Of That's fucking right. Uh, just, Arkham. Just fucking south. shit. Yeah, no. completely real and <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, just of a stone's throw away from Boston. Uh, yeah, Jack, you have experience with some of the creatures he's bringing back, right? Uh, you have been a man of letters for some time now. It's not above your station to be released to take the trash out, as it were. Um, you've seen other hunts happen. Usually not one person, usually not a giant of a person. Uh, usually it's a team of several people that go out to do this. Um, but you do see him come back bloodied, battered, carrying the, a new head of something. Um, every day. Um, and it seems as though he's a one-man wrecking machine. And you wish that somebody contacted Chicago a lot sooner to have him come clean up the streets of Arkham. But nothing that he brings home is what you're looking for. That I think oh, go ahead. At, at one of the moments where Hiram is like removing an appendage of one of these, these creatures mm -hmm. and carting it off, uh, the camera, like the focal point zooms past him. And in an alley, there is a thin, somewhat eccentrically dressed man, um, dressed much like this, who, like, just takes a single step back into the alley before Hiram passes by. Are you making your presence known, or are you nope. just appearing here and then drifting into the darkness? Okay. That one. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, in those seven days, Tora, what are you doing? At first, I'm, like, decidedly avoiding Belladonna mm -hmm. and loosely trying to figure out what the hell happened to Joey. Um, and missing. then, yeah, I don't get anything. So, like, maybe by, like, the third day after I woke up, I'd be like, Oh, Miss Belladonna, 
my friends tell me that I have you to thank for for bringing me back from whatever happened. Thank uh, you. You're welcome. You were gone for quite some time. I assume that wasn't intentional. Um... You assume a lot of things. They're usually correct. It was not intentional. I believe someone drug me out of my usual state. Have the wounds healed? They were superficial enough. Talk about what you saw. I saw a man chained up, mm -hmm. being sacrificed amidst a ritual. There were wax cylinders of sorts, similar to what's been missing from your photograph in the basement. Who was performing this ritual? Robed, white robed figures. Hmm. I don't recognize the group. Hmm. Anything off about them? Aside from the fact that they're wearing robes and doing a ritualistic thing, one guy was holding a tome about as like large as your chest. Hmm. Thanks, Jess. Uh, <laughs> covered in iron locks, symbols, symbols, mm -hmm. strange leather. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. You seem to be real knowledgeable about all of this. Not you, very forthright about information. Do you recall the book I had mentioned? Vaguely, maybe. Perhaps you should pay more attention. That sounds like the book. Sounds sounds like the book that sounds you mentioned, like book that as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yes. In the found. Yeah. Yeah. That that um, one that was pseudo Latin bullcrap. That one. Yes. Divermis mysterious. Divermis <laughs> there. Yeah. Okay. What about it? Some super fancy ritual to yes. kill things to make big things happen, huh? It's actually a book to summon big things. Potato, potato. Hell, as far as I know, it's called potato in this town. I don't know. It's not. <laughs> it's called potato. Obviously. Good to know. Thank you. You're ever so informative when mm -hmm. it matters. So, the friendly undead were sacrificed in a ritual using this book to summon something. Your friends were attacked by night gaunts, and you were torn from your dream by... What? I I've yet to understand what. As far as I know, it's you. I, I mean, you I heard. I heard giant tentacles. Yes, mm. in the middle of my transitionary state of meditation, mm -hmm. it became very visceral, very concrete, and somehow it would appear that my body was with my mind, and there were a lot of creatures in the air. Perhaps with... you should spend less time poking fun at the Book of the Worm and more time practicing your meditation. Ooh. I won't always be there to save you. I have a business to run. Okay. Had I met you ten years ago, I probably would have cut your face. 
Right now, I am adult enough to realize, yes, I am fresh to this situation. And let it be known, never have I once pretended I knew what the fuck I was doing. I'm trying to figure out shit as I go. I followed this letter of invitation because I assumed it would tell me more about this knowledge I seem to have or some sort of skills that are lying dormant in me that I'm trying to unlock. Okay, so thank you very much for all of your help. Maybe we could have a little less tood. I agree. <laughs> so we're gonna be useful to one another and help each other yes Tora I hope you will perhaps if anything else you need mutually amicable one would say I can try amicable it's all I can ask for perfect <laughs> Now that I've sufficiently made Jess hate this NPC more than anyone in every game, uh, we will cut back to several days in the future where things have accomplished. Jack is sated. Uh, Tora is informed. Hiram is, uh, you know, taking some time off of work. And the Inquisition of Jack is in full throes. Uh, and again, Colin, whenever you decide to Kramer in, you yeah. <laughs> Love so that that's the verb. Yeah, it's a good one because um, the camera is like settled on the the trio in the common space, probably at a table of some sort, uh, and the camera is facing the doors. Where so like if someone were to burst in, um, they would be like framed in the shot. Uh, and as you're talking, there is a sort of thump, but the doors in front don't open. Uh, part of the wall just opens like swings outward and there is a somewhat dusty looking man dressed with way too much uh somewhat garish jewelry considering uh the time uh standing there with a pipe and he just clicks off a uh a flashlight and reaches slowly in a pocket i uh i wouldn't do that and i like slowly reach down for my axe. He carries an axe, Tora, in case you're wondering. <laughs> this is the first oh, time yeah. I see the fucking axe. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, it's, <laughs> so it's, we, got, it's, we have fucking on my Bunyan <laughs> carrying an axe unnoticed. It's it's wrapped in leather. It's it's a smallish well mm. for him, slightly mm. smallish, uh like a hand axe. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, and so he pulls it out. Kind of a shotgun yeah. too. <laughs> um, also, kind of a flintlock pistol. Whatever. Nothing, you know. It's awesome. <laughs> it's whatever. It's whatever. <laughs> uh, he he just holds up a pocket watch and counts down, and at five he just snaps and points at a window, and as if on cue, like a crow lands on the windowsill and pecks at it once, and then flies away. Ooh, no, no, no. There are no coincidences here. Who, what the fuck? There are no coincidences. You're, you're absolutely right. Um, in, in, in fact, uh, we merely inhabit a, a lower strata of divinity than, than most everything else. There are no coincidences if you're paying attention, and I have been. Um, I snatched your pipe out of you while you were stuttering. <laughs> I, he just lets it go. <laughs> I am here for a reason. I'm just trying to determine why, what that reason is. I saw that moment several days ago, along with several other moments before they happened. And they led me into a series of tunnels. And those tunnels led me here. And I am very intimidated right now. By what I see. Is the dead body still in the tunnel? Jack and Hiram, I... is the dead body still in the tunnel? Actually, you know what? I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna cut to, 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 to Bradley here. Is there a dead body in the tunnel you just came out of? I didn't know what I tripped over. Okay. But thank you for 
listen, okay, it's clear you are shooketh. You're a little concerned, okay? I'm concerned constantly, um, but I'm also excited. The bathroom's over there. No, not that way. My name is Bradley Leach, and as strange as this may sound, I am vested with certain magical powers. Does this make any sense uh, according to your context at the moment? No. And we get Jack and hire him. <laughs> See, I, and I look to Jack and I'm yeah. like, Yeah, do you uh, look at the axe we, gun? <laughs> do we need to take the trash out? Like, uh, what'd you say your name was? Bradley Leach of the Miskatonic Leeches. Miskatonic Leeches. Wow, that I, sounds like a disgusting medical thing. Jack, you are vaguely aware of a sort of rich-ish family called the Leeches in Arkham. Uh, they do live in the Upper Side. Um, you've never heard of the Miskatonic Leeches, uh, but you've heard of the Leech family. They're not known for anything at all. You've just heard just, of them. And just think, being rich, I probably. think that's the important part, is that you've uh, heard of fair. them. Just being kind of rich. Uh, yeah, no, we, uh, this guy, uh, different kind of trash. We don't take him out. Upper middle class. Mm. <laughs> All right, go. Uh, just tell me when. And I, like, no. bring my axe back down. No, you don't want to mess with this guy. Magic, you say. I've not heard it referred to as such just yet. Alistair Crowley calls magic the science and art of performing one's will on reality. And that is what I try to do. How poetic. Who the I fuck is Alistair? Have down the face of a monster, Mr. Leech? I'm sorry? A monster. Have you, have you seen any sort of supernatural beings? quite a bit. Ready to rip your face out? Not as such. Mm. I saw briefly one that might have, but I didn't see it in any sort of state to do so. And at that, Bradley is again going to pointedly look at Hiram's axe gun. You're here. You foresaw this moment. Why yes. did you follow it? In the pursuit of gnosis, that's one's life's work. The spark of, of divine knowledge that brings you close to the Godhead. There's Belladonna, and there's Mr. Leech right now. <laughs> Out of character. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you're a religious nut of the magical variety? I don't understand. No, uh, no. I'm not religious as such. I simply believe in the third realm. This is all... Who are you all? I've introduced myself, and I understand that this is an unusual circumstance, given that I am a wizard, but... The fuck is a wizard? That's <laughs> um, what I want to know. It's like a guy who does magic. <laughs> The like, mystical uh, like Gnostic me? rites. Yeah. Like but, what, you're talking about the third realm? Like, it's... As, as Aristotle, or I suppose Plato would have put it, yes, the third realm of I idealized everything. This is simpler, and... Like Avalon? Jack, you, you, you sure? You sure? Oh, he says he, uh, he can see the future. That's what kind not, of future do you see? I don't, I don't see. Mm -hmm. okay, anyone so, can see, technically. Yep. All right, Mr. Leach, why don't you recenter yourself and take your verbiage one notch down, a little less poetic, and just explain why the fuck you are here and what you can do here. As I have been attempting to explain, I only know that I am supposed to be here. I don't know why. I'm supposed to be here. If one is to look at a pattern, 
and follow that pattern to the conclusion. It doesn't tell you anything about why that pattern exists. You've merely followed the pattern. Gotcha. I have followed a pattern here. Mm, like the moon. The moon follows a pattern. Moon does. Uh, I'm not feeling too good. Um, Who so, are you? Uh, my All name is you. Jack Winnand. It's a pleasure to meet you. Mm -hmm. You too. Um, great. Uh, welcome to the Foxglove. Um, thanks for stopping in. I don't own the place. I don't work here. Bye. Of course. <laughs> um, in any case, I, uh, I have an appointment to go to. Uh, it's fairly... <laughs> Foxtrot. <laughs> sure. You know, I got to get to the Foxtrot very quickly. So uh, I'm going to... Who says that? Who openly says that? Do you, lo look, Jack. Yeah. Do you at least, uh, do you at least have your tetanus just... Yeah. Okay. It's not, not the best place. Wash your hands. I'm all right. I'm all right. Tetanus is the... Is the shot you're going with? That's the disease we're concerned about. <laughs> that the gentleman's brothel. That's the. That's the just gonna hit brothel. a rusty nail. Look. <laughs> okay. Fine. It's fine. Um, Jack, where are you going to go? Well, <laughs> so Tora mentioned the moon, and then it just like clicks in his head, like, oh. Yeah. So he's actually first going to go to Belladonna to see if there's just, like, any place. He'd usually go to a Men of Letters place, but there's nobody freaking left to show him where to go. There are no safe places here. Yeah, no. So you go to Belladonna asking for a safe place in which you can manacle yourself? or Yeah. Okay. Um, she tells you that there are, there are several places around the city. Uh -huh. I only own one of them, and I would be remiss to send you there. Uh, that's that's fair. I get that. Um... No, not for any want of my own. The warehouse I own is in Rivertown, the same one. And she sort of, like, points to the map, and it's roughly in the area of the green smoke. <laughs> I, I haven't told him yet, but it's also... The same one that the, um, the wax your friend is looking for gets stored there. It's a gotcha. holding place. Weird. Okay, you didn't mention that earlier. I didn't see there was a connection. Okay, fair. Um, also, I'm afraid he'll break things in my establishment. Yeah. Yeah, Jack was like just about to ask if he could use uh, her cellar, and then he just stops his tongue. <laughs> like, you can use the warehouse, but I'm. Since you pointed out that this was one of the locations or potentially near it, I haven't been there. I don't know how trashy it is. And she kind of looks to Hyrule. <laughs> I gotta find a place. Fuck. All right. Um, thank you. Do you anything else I can help you with? Do you need it for long? A place? Uh, no, not very long. Um, but I'll. I have an a, apartment I rarely use. I'm usually at the university, honestly. Also, like, how long have you been standing there? <laughs> no one told me to go anywhere, and I was interested in the conversation okay all right just so you know uh, personal sort of space waves around <laughs> <laughs> yeah personal yeah. space is actually a thing and one that i actually really like uh um what kind of place is it it's a small apartment that my parents gave me of course it is uh um no nah, that, that's not uh, thank you very much. You are, um, just keep being you, but I've got pat you on the shoulder. Great. Bradley's going to turn back around and look at Tora and be like, may I have my pipe back? There wasn't any 
tobacco in it? No, it, it's for my nerves. He's just going to snap his fingers and the pipe will float out of your hand over to his... Ooh, bitch. You and that... I put my hand on there. Baby magic user. Oh god. Do you see this? Do you see this, Hiram? He just waltzes in here and thinks he can do all this shit. I, I can. Why don't you use your fucking hands like a normal person? You seemed to doubt me earlier, and it this seemed to speed that up because I I don't think. My magical abilities are all that important, honestly. Well, I mean... You introduced yourself with your magical abilities. Yeah. Can you, like, uh, can you, like, make something disappear? And your ex disappears. <laughs> <laughs> you can I, feel it. Uh, you can uh, feel it in your hand. Like, it hasn't gone anywhere. It's just no longer visible. <laughs> I think just in shock, like, I let go, though, and, like... Mm-hmm. Oh, like, um, slam my hands on the table and stand up. I, it's fine. I feel like being an ass. There. Yes. So as you let go, I'm gonna GM intrude on high. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you release. <laughs> you release the axe from your hand, and then everyone in the room hears a loud, <laughs> as the single shot from the blunderbuss at the other end. <laughs> fires out and you hear like ting 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 as it like kind of like hits the chandelier and bounces one of the pellets off and you see it smash one of the glasses of some kind of alcohol behind the bar and you see Belladonna peek up from behind the bar having heard the shot and she just glares at you. It's a glare that Tora knows well but I believe it's the first time that Hiram has seen it. At me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, put it on Jack's tab. Give me my fucking axe back or I'm going to make you I, it, Yes. I'm very, very good at that. I saw. It, and I like start inching a little closer. You could see like yeah. my muscles start to flex a little bit. Like I'm looking imposing, <laughs> motherfucker. He, he's like snapping and like making the thing blink to try and get your attention because he's momentarily a little vocally paralyzed. <laughs> he's like, it's under the chair. That that the one that's missing part of the leg. And I like, I just point to Tora. Because I'm not taking my eyes off you. Is it there? It is. He cloaked it. <clears throat> I reach it's, down and I pick it back up. Head hedge magic. It's not. It's a nothing. It means nothing. It's perception. It's not. So that's you, what I'm saying. A parlor trick to like prove to us that you're useful in a situation where our lives have been at risk no less than three times in the past week. Not not, that wait. wait, wait, wait. Can you make this disappear? Because that can be very helpful uh, out on the streets. When when you say this, would which part of you, how much of, of you is, uh, when you say this, is that who, who you mean? Uh, this. The bodice, the whole no. body. Because, as I'm, I'm sure you understand, the, the one's gnosis is, is almost a literal spark, and the, the will that you represent <clears throat> is, is much greater than that of, an axe. Right. Your obfuscations are useless. But okay. it's not the explanations. Right. She at least speaks fucking English. Like, I get that. Okay. Because you are alive and large, no. Because that is dead and small, relatively, yes. Yes. Because it is 
and not alive. I'm not a fucking child. And I like sit back down and I start adding in uh, my little pellet again, get it ready for another shot. So, uh, we get, we get what you can do, but, uh, again, why, why are you here? Because I followed the pattern. I had several images, signs crop up in my day-to-day life. And part of my work involves reading these things, uh, texts, uh, uh, symbolism, uh, patterns, runes. Uh, Say pattern one more fucking time, Bradley. Pattern. And I read these things and I follow them to their conclusion in hopes that I derive from that some meaning, some understanding of where I stand in a larger context because I have not right now. You see, I I am without purpose. You are without purpose and apparently without self-preservation. Do you value your life at all? Because right now you're being an ass. You know what? Just stop. Stop. Have you talked to Miss Belladonna yet? I don't know who that is. Is it her? Yeah. I am Bradley Leach. You've said it. Oh, fucking Christ. I am supposed to be here, and that's all I know, because I believe that I've read the signs Best correctly. I didn't say pattern that time. How did you get in my cellar? Uh, there are tunnels underneath Miskatonic University. I... And you stumbled into one of them? No. I dissected a frog. Go on. And I looked at its organs. Mm-hmm. Um, the light hit its spleen. And you ended up in my basement in the tunnels. How? I don't need to know how you divined that you should be there. I just want to know how you physically got there. I used a crowbar to lift a manhole. In Miskatonic or outside Miskatonic? Outside. Do you know the bell tower? Yes. Thirteen paces from the corner of the bell tower. I looked down and found a manhole, Mm -hmm. and using the crowbar that I had found Mm -hmm. previous to that, I opened the manhole. And you headed straight here. I get the feeling you don't want to know the precise way I knew how to get here, but Yes. yes, I came directly here. And were you followed or seen by anyone? Is that, is that something I should have paid attention to? Is it your first time in the tunnels? Yes. Yes. Oh. They go under the entire city. To many places. Frequented by many people far more skilled than you. And she glances to Hiram. Then I didn't read incorrectly, did I? You didn't. I don't know why you're here. Do you have a message? Did you see anything else? Or are you just here to show us parlor tricks? I... I wanted to see where the pattern would take me, and it took me here. You all are unfazed by my magic. And I'm tempted to extrapolate from that, especially what you, I'm sorry, you are so angry with me, you haven't introduced yourself. Um, I saw, and I'm going to point at Hiram, him kill something. Something no. that... I don't kill. I see. I suppose that makes sense. The thing that you didn't kill should not have been. It felt as though it was outside the pattern. I'm sorry. Outside of the Godhead's equation. Which thing did you see him kill? 
uh, don't. Uh, this would have been one of the things that he was bringing Jack. Oh, you can go nuts with this one, Colin. Oh, what? Yeah. What? What mythological fantasy awfulness did you <laughs> see Hiram kill? Um, I saw him bring that axe down on uh, a red cap. <laughs> of all the things, that's where you. That's where you. Were. <laughs> it was a craven creature in the skin of person. Mm-hmm. Um looking to wet its head, anoint it with the blood of an innocent person. I, I, I've, I've read about those before. That was uh, two nights ago, Hiram, the red cap? Yeah, give I or take. cleaning the mess. Taking out the trash. No, no, I cleaned the mess that you oh. made on the floor again. Thank you. Mm-hmm. It's nice of you. And good, good establishment. So you saw this happen, and you decided to just check it out, Bradley. No. Okay. <laughs> Please. It's not me. quite as clear as that, but mm-hmm. in essence, yes. Oh, hedge wizards. While this conversation is going on, Jack is just slowly making his way out the door. Oh yeah, you've <laughs> been like, gone, honey boo boo. One you, step out. No one time. even noticed. Uh-uh. <laughs> you left us with this thing that just talks and it doesn't fucking shut up. You mean At Joey? At this point, I think I would <laughs> rather. Wasn't it Joey? Oh my god! Don't put the two of them together. Like At least right? help for the little child. This one just seems dainty and unuseful. So. You know what? Because because it's it's uh we got about twenty left here. I'm gonna gonna, 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 gonna GM and food. We're just getting started. I'm gonna GM and food. We can talk for hours. This is uh, this is this group that we got. Welcome to roleplay, like uh Jack, GM intrusion for you, take an XP, give one away. As sure. you slink out the door, and you can uh, you can uh, you can tell me no if you have one. Uh, you, no, no, I'll I'll give an XP to Hiram. Okay. As you begin to slink out the door, Belladonna cocks her head to the side and says, Jack, take them with you. Um. Uh, you have got to learn sometime. <laughs> Are you... And he's thinking fucking crazy, but he says, Are you sure about that? Yeah. And in fact, Hiram, come here. And you see, like, the most sinister smile you've ever seen. It's like a, a mantis about to eat the head of the mate. And oh, she. No. They only do that in captivity. Who's holding her? <laughs> Tell me, Mike. I will breathe. <laughs> you hear, you hear this, this, you see her disappear behind the bar. And then you hear what is clearly a lock noise. And then, as she wrenches the floorboards up. Uh, and then you hear what sounds like chains. Like piles of chains. And she reaches up and just plops manacles. Like thick, thick manacles on the countertop. And says, be a deer and carry those, Hiram. Mm. And then she slams the door closed. Oh, and I just oh. take him and I start like fireman rapping, get around. I didn't him. know you were into that. Is that a thing? <laughs> oh, Tori, you're not going to the Fox Club tonight. Or the yeah. Fox Trot tonight, sorry. <laughs> oh. Different okay. establishment entirely. Uh huh. Sure. Whatever you say. Do we, do, are we taking this one along with us? Points to Bradley. I think we should probably take him back home. Bradley? Yes. To like take him back home? Uh, Miskatonic. Take him out back. Yeah, like, <laughs> back home. Bradley, I don't know where your research has taken you thus far, but you can either go home and research more of it, or you can see what happens in Rivertown. Well, um... Fate binds you to people as much as events. 
Why do you always wax poetic when you're nervous? Just say it, Bradley. Yes. There we go. I'm proud of you, Bradley. <laughs> now, Jack, this could <sighs> be a night to remember. A night, the thing. You say. I mean, Why after all, there's, there's no one else to take care of you. You need taken Thanks. care of, rich boy. <laughs> Thanks, Bella. So, 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 Mike. Mm -hmm. In the seven days uh -huh. that I've already been getting to know Jack and Jack's patterns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. The last two days, Jack has seemed a little froggy. He's uh, he's he's in earlier at night. Um, or he's not in at all at night. Um, you do see that he is a little bit squirrely when it comes to mentions of, of nighttime. He is, he looks older for these last two, two or so days. Um, less put together, uh, more world weary than, than what you met, the, the spry young buck you met in the, uh, the park there. Um, but yeah, I feel like with enough close watching, an attentive care, you can put at least two and two together. You're pretty sure it's four. Whether Jack has declared it or not, you've, you've seen these signs before, mm -hmm. usually before a beheading, but you've seen them before, and Jack seems like a pretty nice guy. He still owes you eighteen dollars, so he does owe you eighteen dollars. Do owe you eighteen dollars? Can't get, get off him yet. Yeah, it's hard to get eighteen dollars from someone without a head. So, or easier. I mean, maybe that's true. You've never seen him actually pay for things. He just says he's no. going to, and people give him things for free. It's weird. It seems to be the perks it's, of being. It's a loaded. rich person thing. Yeah. It, yeah. It sure. That's how is. that shit fucking works, I. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I get it. It's very affordable to be rich. It like... really is. It's very convenient. People just give you things. It's great. Uh, <laughs> that's why I'm a Twitch streamer. Uh, <laughs> that being said, Jack, are you leading your new compatriots to their demi the um, warehouse? I, I guess I am leading them to the warehouse where we're going. Um you have any words well, Donna of fucking threw me under the bus. <laughs> you have any words of wisdom to pass along, or are you just gonna be? We're gonna party. He's been uh, pretty straightforward about almost everything else. Um, so I would say it's a little weird how quiet he is. Mm. Every once in a while, he looks like he wants to say something and he doesn't, mm -hmm. which is also strange because he usually speaks his mind a lot. Yeah. It definitely picks up on this unease. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what the pattern tells you, Bradley, but you all venture. Also, also he offers anybody else to drive for him. Uh, too bad the kid isn't here. He rolls down the window all the way and sticks his head out. Because he's going to be sick, of course. Right. Like no, he drives. Um, so he, he drives his car. You, you see a far more nervous Jack. Uh, he's driving down uh, from where you guys are. Um, you, you go down East Main, jump onto Peabody, head down to East Church Street. You, Hiram, after a minute or two, you, you sort of recognize the area. This is Rivertown. You've cased the area. You haven't made the full leap into breaking and entering, but you've cased the area. This is the vicinity of the warehouse in which you found out the wax cylinders were delivered to. Mm. You're not sure which warehouse it is, but you know it's in the immediate area. Tora, you're a smart girl, and you have a good recollection. This is also in the vicinity of one of the marks on the map that made the pentagram. A warehouse told by Belladonna that she owns and is one of the ones that produced the green smoke. Bradley, this is an adventure. You're on a field trip. Have a great time. Uh, <laughs> that being said, you all see a very nervous Jack who constantly looks out the window, dips his head to see past the windshield, and nervously parks and leads you in to what looks like 
an abandoned warehouse. <laughs> Any last words, Jack? <laughs> uh, uh, nope, not, not, not really. Unless anybody has words they want to say. You, uh, you want the, the party chains now? Or, uh, we gonna wrestle later? Oh my god. Oh, there's not many reasons why we'd be taking you to a warehouse. <laughs> there. <laughs> Just. Huh. Uh. I, I see. It's just a warehouse. I don't uh-huh. think there's a need uh-huh. for the par- party it's chains. Not, that's- it's not just a warehouse. It's the warehouse that we're going to. Shut up, Bradley. <sighs> Jack, are you a masochist carrying around that sword of yours? What are you talking about? What? Mm-hmm. What are you? You can feign ignorance i, I see what, what you are oh oh um yeah uh so he's gonna actually give the sword to you right right so it is uh it is for me heroic act of self-protection and the people around you blah 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 i'll do what i need to if i must but it won't come to that it'll be fine I will say, because I'm a merciful game master here, uh, Hiram, if you would like to spend one XP, you can have up to five silver bullets in your jacket. And you can have, just in case. It is a trick of the trade, but it will cost you one XP. uh, I encountered these these things before. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Okay. So you spend yeah. one XP, you can add five silver bullets to your character sheet for whatever you might need. Um, that being said, uh, I'm going to GM Intrude one more time because I like it and I'm a mean, mean person. Bradley, <laughs> take an XP. Yeah. Give one to whoever you'd like. Jess. Uh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Jess, take an XP. Bradley, as you enter this warehouse... Uh, blissfully ignorant to the conversation that happens before you or the events that are about to happen, you are hit with a sense of unease. The unease that you feel when you when you are not confident that you have just seen um, deja vu. Like you've been here before. Um, it kind of washes over you and you have that like sinking feeling like you've done this before, but you couldn't have done this before. This is the first time you met these people. But then you recall the pattern, as Tora loves to hear. You've seen this warehouse before, although it wasn't with these people. In fact, there was no one here. This warehouse was empty. But there is a sub-basement to this warehouse, and you know for some inexplicable reason that this warehouse is connected to those tunnels as well. And perhaps the things that Belladonna had mentioned that might be lurking in the tunnels or watching might be here in the sub-basement. That's what you remember. Of course. And as this uh, dawning sort of cascades over you, as you guys enter the warehouse, chains clinking, sword being passed off, a brilliant white beam of moonlight shines in through one of the many windows. Yeah, let's do the party chains now. (laughs) Bradley, like as as we're walking in, is like slowly sinking down until he's pressing the side of his face against the ground and gently like almost like he's tickling it. Just going, It's wrong down there. It's very wrong down there. And it may come up in much the way that a rising tide lifts all sh- ships. If it rises too fast, it sinks them. And as this revelation is spoken aloud, as Tora marvels over a purely silvered sword in a cane, and as Hiram manacles Jack to a pillar in the room, you all begin to hear 
a low rumble of a chant. And Tora, you immediately recognize it as the one from your dream. And that is where we end tonight's episode of no! The Letters. No, 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 Fuck you. I'm sorry. <laughs> you promised me fucking a billion tentacle monsters. There, listen, I statted up tentacle monsters, and you guys role-played for two hours straight. I can't stop you. You got the script together. Yeah, I didn't account for this, and I should have, and I'm sorry. I mean, I wouldn't mind playing for the <laughs> My girlfriend will Maybe me. not tonight. My I'm... wife would also actually kill me. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, guys, this was episode oh. four, Moonlighter. Uh, we will pick up next week with whatever's going to happen in this warehouse. I'm glad you picked up on that, uh, Jess. That was a uh, little... You slid in there the whole night. Just waiting for someone to pick up that, that low-hanging fruit. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, so this was, this was episode four of Some Kind of Shenanigans. Colin will be back next week to play everyone's favorite hedge wizard. Uh, but yeah, let's go around... <laughs> Let's go around, do our introductions. We'll go host a friend of ours, and we'll start with Colin. So, Colin, who are you? Where can we find you, and what are you up to? Hi, uh, I'm Colin Vulcanet. I am one half of the Phantom Roll Booth. You can catch me sometimes over on my own channel, the Phantom Roll Booth. Um, things we have coming up in the future. Right now, we've got two shows, Monday and Wednesday. They're both great, D&D &D, uh, and Dari Islands and uh, Dungeons and Deductibles. Uh, we are very soon, we've got some a couple of projects coming down the pipeline. One is going to be a Warhammer Fantasy uh, RPG game. And the other is, uh, I will just call it Morty's Devils, because we haven't, I don't know if we're officially like, advertising for it yet, but uh, I'm really excited for this one because it's a big background project that's been chugging on for a little bit okay okay uh let's jump over to the other half of phantom roll booth marcy herself marcy who are you where can we find you and what are you up to hi everybody my name is marcy Bell, and i'm the gm for the owl of lycia we used to stream on monty cook games twitch channel but now we're on litera dots and you can find uh myself and her and a lot of great people uh playing in a setting that i wrote since i was like in high school so this is real fun um also, you can find me here every Thursday, uh, Howling at the Moon, sometimes. <laughs> and, uh, and on Saturdays, um, alternating, I do uh, Dragon Heist with Water... D uh, blah, 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 I can speak. Goldheart mm -hmm. Gaming. Um, and then uh, I just got accepted into uh, Gore of Ravnica, and that's going to be this week. Uh, content warnings include lots of violence, BDSM, and a couple of other uh, heavy themes, but we're doing this for... Um, uh, Mental Health Awareness Month, and we're raising money for uh, You Are Rad. I feel like BDSM is just a standard theme in all your games. Like, that's a warning in all of them. I mean, you know, Ed Greenwood left a lot of <laughs> shoes to fill, and some of those shoes go up to your thighs. You know he's still alive, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Hi, Ed. Very active. He's very active on Twitter. <laughs> he's, he's not on Twitter, I think he's, he's still wearing his shoes, is that was my point. <laughs> oh, I see. I see, what I see what you're saying. I don't know how to transition this, but speaking of wearing thigh high shoes, <laughs> let's throw it up and go to Gnome. Uh, who are you? Where can we find you? And what are you up to? Only if those shoes make me six foot four because I'm five <laughs> feet in real life. Go for this, it. Is the, this is the biggest character I've ever played. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you for having me. My name is Gnome, and I do all the things on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find me there at Nomedic. Um, I am on the Greyhawks channel with a game that Kika runs uh, that is based off of the amazing 10 out of 10 star Dungeons & Dragons, the movie. I heard about this. Yeah. The, movie, the show it's, you know it's great it's a crazy time uh and then what else do i do uh, on wednesdays i pull some gnomish magic and i am in uh, two places at one time uh you can catch me on encounter roleplay uh running a tales from the loop game called little busters where we're actually now uh in 1992 season finale starts in two weeks so we are actually playing the things from the flood the little kids are not little busters anymore they're teenagers. Fuck me. <laughs> Fucking teens in the 90s is great. Are you doing you things from the flood? Tonight? Yeah, we're doing. Yeah, oh yeah, things from the flood. Ooh, ooh. Talk about uh, content warnings because <laughs> it's 
<laughs> it's the nineties uh, and you can kill all the kids now, which is great. Uh, yeah, the kitty gloves are off, and I'm so excited. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to bring that over. Yeah. Uh, and then also on Wednesdays, uh, you can catch me on God's Fall channel over on Twitch, where I play a gnome in uh, Rise of the Demigods, which is also a podcast. And on Thursdays, Obs, uh, I'm here, and I love this game. Oh, my God. This is, y'all are great. <laughs> Guys, just chant season two at me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but with that we will transition over to jess who are you where can we find you and what are you up to hello i am burst of hope on twitter um this season kind of is a wind down so i can kind of focus on this game this is my only regular campaign i kind of pick up some one shots here and there i have plans in the future for some certain streams maybe tabletop a little bit of martial arts something in between we don't know yet but uh yeah keep your eye out on twitter i'll be existing there being everyone's cheerleader so yeah hell yeah um, fantastic, guys. This was awesome. Colin, thank you so much for being here. Chat, thank you for exploding. Uh, everyone who donated and uh, did some biddies, uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, guys, if you want to support the channel, the best way to do that is please go check out our Patreon. And if you guys want to be part of the conversation, please join us over on Discord, where we have at least half of the cast is now posting GIFs of our reactions to this game. So go check that out. Repost those things everywhere. Uh, we'll see you over there. And with that, we're going to go raid our friends over at Welcome Party RPG for some wholesome fun where they are playing Pokemon. And it's a good oh. palate cleanser from whatever the hell we're going to do <laughs> next week. Uh, so go check those guys out. And from all of us to you guys, bye bye.